every firm is in non-compliance with a regulation, whether it's SEC or state, or it in non-compliance with their own compliance policies. And when I say every, I, I do mean every. There are so many different rules, regulations, that it can be difficult to make sure that you're adhering to everything. And that's the point of compliance. That That is truly the point of compliance, is to monitor and detect when you are having non-compliance with areas and then resolving them. So let's kind of walk through what that looks like. The first thing that you need to do when you find out that you're in non-compliance is resolve the issue. Um, regardless of what it is, you want to make sure that you fix it because how people are getting fined about not having an adequate uh, compliance program is that you detect an issue or an issue is brought up and you are not resolving it. You just are accepting the risk that hey, you know, in order to get in compliance with this rule or regulation, or maybe we just don't want to, uh, we're not going to fix it. Um, the reason why that is so risky is because that the moment that you find out about something and you do nothing, you've made a decision. Um, and so that is now a choice. And a few things could happen. Uh, the SEC now gives very large whistleblower rewards. So you could have someone internally decide to report your conduct because you're not resolving it. Um, so the people that are pushing to make sure that bringing things to your attention and to resolve those issues, if they're going unresolved, they could potentially become whistleblowers. The second thing is if there was ever an examination that uncovered whatever the conduct is, and it shows a pattern that's going to set yourself up for a bigger deficiency and potentially fines. Um, and the fine could be against uh, you as the advisor, so your, the firm, or the fine could be against the chief compliance officer if they knew about it and did nothing. The second thing that you need to do is fix the process. So whatever allowed the issue to happen, we need to make sure that we are fixing that process. That might mean we need new procedures. That might mean we need to draft new policies. That might mean that we need to put in some preventative controls in place. Maybe you're in non-compliance because you just simply did not know that the rule changed. That's a simple fix. Let's make sure that we're subscribing to the SEC notices um, in industry blogs so that you're up to date in getting the information you need to make sure that you have a robust compliance program. The third thing that you need to do once you fix the process is you need to train to the process. So whoever is responsible for implementing the process or, or who is responsible for parts of the policy, you want to make sure that those individuals are aware of their responsibility and they are also involved in the resolution of fixing the issue. The next thing that you want to do is document the situation. So everybody should have a compliance exception folder. Um, and you want to document by just doing a memo to file that identifies what the issue was, why it was an issue. So if you were in non-compliance with a, a policy or a particular regulation, you want to make sure that you, you've identified that. Um, and then also documenting what you did to fix it. And these are internal records. However, um, the first thing that they're going to ask for if you have an examination is a record of any compliance exceptions. Um, and so that's the time where you would want to provide that information to whatever regulatory body is um, asking for it. And that is preventative. Those are typically going to be part of the first request as part of a, a routine examination. And you want to make sure that you're providing those records so that it demonstrates that you have a robust compliance program that can detect issues, fix those issues, and that you're maintaining a record to demonstrate that you have done all those things. Um, and some people might say, oh, you know, we don't want to give a regulator like our dirty laundry. But you have to also think about the perspective of, is it going to be worse to provide it to them on the onset of the examination, assuming that the compliance exception fell within the examination period, or is it a situation where you just want to wait until they potentially discover it? 
Um, the last thing that you want to make sure that you're doing is anytime you're aware of any conduct that is a violation of a rules specifically, you want to talk to your general counsel or your attorney. Um, there are very few things that would prompt a um, self-disclosure to the SEC, but some things to keep in mind is just whatever happened, was there client harm um, or a fraud perpetrated? Uh, typically speaking, if you have a client harm or a fraud, you want to talk to your lawyer immediately because the SEC does, and most state regulators have a method of um, self-reporting of issues, which can actually help you in the long run as far as um, making sure that whatever the conduct that was discovered um, is brought to the regulator and that you're given more favorable terms should there, ha should there be a fine. The last thing you want to do is consult your general counsel. Anytime you've been made aware that you violated um, a securities rule or regulation, you want to make sure that you're talking to your attorney to see if they advise whether or not you need to um, self-report that conduct to a regulatory body. Um, there's very few things that would really trigger that, um, but Typically speaking, it's going to fall into two categories. So if there was um, a realizable client harm or fraud perpetrated, um, you would be given much more favorable terms. And that's not to say that you're going to avoid a fine um, or penalty, but the regulators are going to look at a self-report of that conduct more favorably than if they were to discover it either through a client complaint or um, through a normal examination. As always, good compliance is good business. I hope you learned today the importance of a robust compliance program. Your compliance program is never going to be done. You know, it's not a situation where you just create your policies and implement controls and that's it. You never have to think about compliance again. Compliance is constantly evolving with the regulatory landscape um, and good compliance is good business.